Lord bless everyone. And today I have a wonderful testimony, amazing testimony, <clears throat> from a sister named Sinead. Um, she was a famous occult writer, and she now is a Christian. And do you believe, uh, before I, I have her give her testimony, do you believe um, she sent me the recording of her testimony and I went through a whole bunch of things trying to get it, get it in, in my phone. And it was like the enemy was attacking from here and there. It's like, God knows. God's going to use this testimony to save people. And the devil knows. And, and the devil wants to, don't want people to hear this testimony. And, and I have the testimony here for you to hear. I'm not going to play music till after the testimony is over. But, I would love for you to hear this. Um, Sinead has been my friend for um, close to maybe a year. And she has a wonderful testimony. The Lord delivered her from the occult just like me. And, and she's been through lots of things we could say we've been in the same in the same path. Only thing is I live in America and she lives in Britain. But still, it's, she's been through a lot. Um, let's play her testimony now. Hi, Harris. Thank you so much for inviting me to share my testimony with you and your listeners. I'm really grateful for the opportunity to connect and share my experiences of God with you all and how he saved me from witchcraft, abuse and addiction. Although it's not just my experiences, but the evidence of his truth and power that I'm sharing too and that's really important because Christ didn't just set me free. He worked a miracle. And miracles, I believe, are the evidence that he lives and acts in our lives and in our world today. So I'm going to give you some background on me first, because that makes sense of what's to come. I was born to an alcoholic mother and an absent father. My mother died of alcoholism aged just 46, and years later, when I tracked down my father, he admitted that they conceived me in an alcoholic blackout. Neither remembered it. And I just want to say here how Jesus has recently revealed to me how important it is to conceive children in a loving and secure relationship. We know that, of course, but do we? He said to me that children conceived in the way I was, or similarly, can be at immediate risk of demonic activity through the condition of the parents at that moment. Anyway, back to it. I was taken into care of the social services in England when I was three years old. And I was being neglected and abused in my mother's care, of course. So I was placed in a foster home. And unfortunately, I was also abused there. Eventually, though, custody of me was awarded to my maternal grandfather and that was amazing he really loved me and I loved him if it hadn't been for him I don't believe that I would be alive today he was God-given as far as I'm concerned not that there weren't issues though he was an atheist and really didn't approve of Christianity he'd been raised a Christian but had lost his faith during World War II so Without a firm foundation in Christ, and with my early traumas still unhealed, I became vulnerable to demonic oppression. My maternal grandmother was heavily involved with spiritualism, and from the age of six, she exposed me to the ideas of ghosts, spirits, and psychic phenomena like ESP. She had a good friend who was a spiritual medium, he was one of those mediums that physically changed into the spirit he was channeling, and I saw him change into another person before my eyes. For a child, that was an extraordinary experience, and I believe it was this early exposure to spiritualism and the occult that nurtured my deep curiosity and affinity with witchcraft. As a child, I had a lot of supernatural occult experiences. I had out-of-the-body experiences. I heard nocturnal voices and ghosts and things like that. And I cast my first witchcraft spell at seven years old. It was weird. It was as if I just knew what to do. 
And I realize now, of course, that demons were directing me. By the age of 10, I was a goth, dressing in black and thick black eyeliner and black nail varnish. I read everything I could on witchcraft and watched horror movies on TV. I loved the classic Hammer House of Horror films and was obsessed by vampires, monsters and witches. At college, I was initiated into Wicca and began learning about paganism in the New Age. I read tarot cards, did colour healing and performed spells. It all seemed completely harmless. It seemed good, even. I was searching for meaning and truth, but in the wrong places. But when I was 19, things took a real turn for the worst because Grandad died. And my world just fell apart at that point. Unfortunately, I was not in a position yet to support myself, and soon I struggled financially. I fell prey to a man who conned young vulnerable women into taking out loans in their name for him. So that made things worse, and I spent some time homeless and suffered from malnutrition. I was desperate to gain some control over my life, so I joined an occult society that practiced high magic. So that's the ceremonial type of magic used by the Golden Dawn, Blavatsky and Aleister Crowley. I loved the society. It gave me a feeling of family and I soon went through the initiations to become a high-ranking member. But, to cut a long story a bit shorter here, it slowly became evident to me that the society was in fact a black magic satanic cult based upon a leader who believed himself to be the Antichrist. I learned that their ambition was to establish ten kings in ten lands. As my awareness of this truth grew, I became victim to a plot to kill me and endured further abuses. I was devastated by what was happening to me and how my world was falling apart. Depression took hold and I began to self-medicate with alcohol. Soon, I was following my mother to an early grave. For about five years, I was never actually sober, often in blackout. My daily intake was two bottles of wine, about five pints of Guinness and a couple of brandies. And I'm a small woman. The quantity of alcohol was just killing me. I did try to stop a couple of times, but the withdrawals were just so bad I started again. I reached out for help, but no one could help me. Then, God saved me with a miracle. One day, following a particularly bad alcoholic binge where I yet again had no recollection of the previous night, I knew deep in my heart that I had reached a point of choice. I knew that if I continued drinking, I was going to die, or I stopped. It sounds like an easy choice, but it really, really wasn't. I couldn't see how life could work without alcohol. It was my life. And I tried to stop before, but couldn't because of the withdrawals anyway. So I was distraught, and in that moment did something highly unusual. I fell to my knees and I prayed to God. I say prayed, but it was more like a rant. I cried and I shouted. I told him that I had tried everything. I'd fought this thing for years and I was done. I couldn't do it anymore. And that if he was real, then he should do it. He should cure me. He should do what I couldn't do. And if he did, then I'd go to church. Well, it was amazing because I felt him reach into me and take the alcoholic, the alcoholism out. More specifically, though, and I know that people can find this difficult, I felt that what was being removed was a demon. I felt for a moment the truth of his goodness and the reality of the demonic evil within me. From that moment, though, I never drank again. 
I never had any withdrawals, never even had the tiniest compulsion or desire for alcohol. And that was 20 years ago. I've never had that fight within me again. That fight that recovered alcoholics have. And that's because I'm cured completely. And only God could do that. I would love to be able to say that that was the end of it all. And my life was a clear path in Christ from then on. I've learned the hard way that Satan will do everything he can to thwart a new believer. I have suffered and continue to suffer, although less so, from spiritual warfare. Satan is sneaky. He uses people to cast doubts within you and sends people in sheep's clothing to cause you harm. I have faltered many times. Christianity was so new to me, so alien in a way, that I'm ashamed to say I backslid a couple of times and doubted many, many more, but he never gave up on me. He blessed me with a number of visions of his kingdom. One time, God unveiled me and supported me as I walked in his kingdom for about 10 minutes. I saw that his kingdom is truly love and more that true love is life and true life is love. Any life that is not within his kingdom is not truly life. He's also blessed me with the ability to discern evil. Now, I'm extremely unsure and still rather confused by what he wants me to do with that gift. But I trust he will guide me when he's ready or when I am ready. I wrote a book about my experiences called Magic to Miracles. And I'm in the process of setting up a website called True Life is Love. I am called to share two main truths with people. First, that true life is love and second, that evil and demons are real and the occult, new age and witchcraft are always allied to evil. I still know many people who truly believe that the spirits they channel and the spells they cast are good. This is so heartbreaking. Jesus came to show us the way to everlasting life. We must choose that life him in every moment. Thank you for listening. It's amazing testimony. Um, I want to play the hymn, So I Send You, and then we're going to end the program.
Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to end this program now and give some thought to what she said. Um, amazing testimony. Um, I read the book, Magic to Miracles. is an amazing book. Um, it'll keep you on its pages. Um, the first day I even took that book up, I, I, I just, I, was, I think I read 60 pages of that book. I was just hooked into it. Um, Lord bless you, and I'll see you next program of Mr. Kakalides and the Bible Podcast. So long.